Welcome to this week's special presentation titled Easy Rider Glides to 80% Annualized Returns. My name is Todd Schaefer, Manager of Research for VectorS, and I have a great demonstration for the Easy Rider method for this week's special presentation. If you watch our daily color guard presentations, you hear us reference Easy Riders every night. It looks and sounds something like this. We begin on the home page with a review of the market action for the day and its effect on our market timing signals. We look at a market timing graph, and then we go to the VectorVest Views, our daily newsletter. If I click on the headline story, we scroll down. Beyond the strategy guidance, we come to the top derby performers, and we say something to the effect of the top derby performers for today on both a one and a five day basis. All of the one day winners bullish, confirming the trend in that time frame. The five day winners all bullish, confirming the trend in that time frame. For those of you who are easy riders, our top performing five day search that continues to perform today cryptocurrency stocks up 12.4% today. Honorable mention goes to Russell 2000 up 4.97% today and romancing the NPM comes in at 5.11% on today's market action. So as is implied in that narrative, Easy Rider is a trading approach that uses the best performing five day strategy that's continuing to perform today. No matches, no trades. Simply trade the stocks from that best performing search if the market follows through the next session. Of course, we improve our chances if we trade with the market's trend. So let's take a look at some examples and we'll begin with the market timing graph. Let's open a market timing graph and we'll just put on the price looking at daily candlesticks over the past year. And I'll stretch this out as far as I can. Okay, so we're looking at a one year graph of the VectorVest composite and it's easy to see it's been a volatile ride. Wide ranging candles, particularly in the first half of the year. Fast moves, lots of chop, some gapping price action. There have been some trending opportunities on the long side, particularly last summer into the August high. And then we also saw last fall and early this year, a couple rallies. So they're easy to see in hindsight, of course, the challenge is to measure and map these trends in real time. And it just so happens VectorVest has the tools to do that. And we're pretty good at it. So let's overlay our fastest, most sensitive timing signal. So most sensitive to reversals, the primary wave. Let's put those signals on the graph. So as you can see, that sensitivity generates a lot of signals, particularly in this fast moving chop. When the price action legs out, there's great signals, but in the choppy market, maybe a little too fast, a little too sensitive for my taste. Let's take a look at our next market timing signal, the green light buyer signal. The green light buyer signal is generated when there's a green light in the price column of the color guard a little less sensitive than the primary wave. The yellow circles are neutral, meaning you didn't have a green light in the price column. The red triangles are our confirmed down call. I like this signal because it's a little less sensitive than that primary wave and it has a continuation aspect, right? It comes in clusters and shows you that the trend is continuing. And when the market pulls back, we stop getting green lights. However, it is still giving me some signals in the chop. What would happen if we slowed the signal once again to the green light buyer RT kicker signal? Ah, now we're talking. The green light buyer RT kicker uses the RT indicator to confirm acceleration and minimizes the entry in the chop. I like it. Let's see how the DEW performed. So we'll put it on the chart. That's a little bit slower, well off the bottoms on some of those signals. And the confirm call is slower still. In fact, the first up signal missed the first two turns. So out of those signals, my favorite, the green light buyer RT kicker signal seems to be the porridge that's just right. So I'm going to use the green light buyer RT kicker signal to trade the top easy rider search from the views. 
I'm using the power of the VectorVest system to identify the best performing search in this relatively short time frame. But how long should I hold them? I noticed that waiting for the confirmed down call would have held me holding through two cycles in this first turn and replacing into that on that big pullback. How might I protect myself from those pullbacks on a rule driven basis? Well, I do have the RT kicker combo signal, which confirms the red lights with accelerating momentum to the downside to confirm those red lights. And that does a pretty good job. Although I noticed in this first severe pullback, we got the signal a little late at the bottom of that pullback. Let's take a look at the DEW. The DEW did do better with the down signals close to the tops, which probably has a lot to do with how it's constructed. It uses a 30 day weighted moving average confirmed by the Detrender price oscillator. So can I custom mix signals where I enter on the green light buyer RT kicker and exit on the DEW? Well, of course, but it will be a manual process. So let's see if this idea even has any merit. What would happen if I bought a basket of Easy Rider stocks based on the green light buyer RT kicker and closed them on the DEW down signal? Is there consistently potential for gain? So let's use the power of the VectorVest database to go back in time and reconstruct what we would have done on these signals and see if the idea has any merit. So we'll begin that process by changing our market timing signal back to the green light buyer RT kicker signal. And let's put on a date line our first signal was on May 25th, 2022, and we did have follow through the next day. So let's see what the top derby searches were on 525. So let's go up to the views and let's roll our date back to 525. And if we scroll down, we'll come to that derby section of the views. Hottest growth stocks was our top performing five day search and it continued to perform on a one day basis. So I'll write this down on the signal from the 25th. Hottest growth stocks was the easy rider search and we would have held that basket through the DEW down signal of June 10th. Now let's do that again. We'll change our signal back to the green light buyer RT kicker. After that down call, our next up signal was here on July 7th. Now we see the market moved higher the next day, but it ended up reversing. I'm going to assume the market was up in the morning and I took a trade. Checking in with the views, let's see what our top derby search was. Going back to July 7th. Our top performing five day search was cryptocurrency stocks, also performing on a one day basis. But I can't in good faith suggest you load up your portfolio on crypto stocks. Dabble if you like, but I'm going to use the second place performer, Jailbreak which was a five day performer continuing to perform. So let's go back to the market timing graph. We're going to hold these stocks through the DEW down signal of August 29th. And don't worry, I'm writing these down. I'll put them together in a table to give you a consolidated list. Now let's take a look at our next signal here on the 18th, but we can see this candle. Maybe I need to zoom in a little bit. Market opened lower and moved lower throughout the session. So no follow through on this candle, which means we need to go to our next signal date, which was the 26th. And here again, the market moved higher, even though it ended up 
finishing lower on the day. So let's consult the views to get our search for that day. Just out of curiosity, let's go back to the 18th also. If I scroll down, our top one-day performers were all bullish. On a five-day basis, we did have Vern's Vultures sticking its nose under the tent. But no repeats between the two lists. So we wouldn't have taken a trade even if we had follow-through on the 18th. So our next signal date was the 26th of October, and it did have follow-through, so let's roll our calendar forward to that. And by the way, I just confirmed the date up here in the upper left corner. Scrolling down, there's those cryptocurrency stocks again, so certainly a hot search. But again, we went with Bear Market Burner, the best performing five-day that continued to perform on a one-day basis. So Bear Market Burner on that signal and that signal lasted until December 15th. Let's find our next signal. Here on January 9th we did follow through. There's cryptocurrency stocks still but our selection is going to be bottoms up. And that signal lasted until the 20 first of February. And finally let's bring it home. We had a signal April 3rd, but no match. So no trade. So that exercise was all to build our list so we could go back and do the research. But if you think about it and how that would execute in real time, I get a green light buyer RT kicker signal. I go to the views and find the top easy rider search. I buy the stocks from that search on the next market session if the market moves higher. So let's just see if that idea, if that methodology has any merit. So first, here's our table with the searches identified, our entry date, and our exit date. So my next step is to just run some quick tests to see what the possibilities are. Does this idea have any merit? Is there some opportunity with which to work? So our first search was hottest growth stocks on May 25th. So let's move back into the program. We'll go into the Unisearch tool. Let's set our date to May 25th. And we're going to run the search hottest growth stocks. So easiest to just resort our toolbar by alphanumeric and we'll scroll down. I'll just click in the list, type the letter H and that'll jump me down to the H's. Hottest growth stocks. There's our search. And let's run that search on that date. And I'm going to limit it to the top 10. And I can scroll that up a little bit so we can see the search results. And I'm just going to quick test this basket of stocks. So these are the stocks that were at the top of the list on the evening of the 25th. I'm going to quick test them to our exit date of June 10th. So right now we see they got crushed running them to current. But if I click on the calendar, I can change my end date. To June 10th and my run button here the bottom okay that resets the date let's rerun the test and we see just point A to point B we had six winners four losers biggest gainer was ESTE up 21% biggest loser Zim down 25% overall the basket made just 1% well three quarters of a percent while the market was down 2%. So we had a positive return, beat the market, but I'm not going to write home a letter saying how great a trader I am at a three quarters of a percent gain. But I have an interesting insight I'd like to share with you. If we go back to the market timing graph, and remember we're on this turn. I'm going to zoom in just on that turn 
and we see the market peaked here on the 7th of June. If I go back to that Unisearch tool and I quick test these guys again, and in hindsight, this is just to demonstrate an idea, if we stop the test at the market peak, let's put those results side by side. At the top of that market cycle, our basket of stocks had gotten as high as 12%. The market was up 4.5. As measured by the SPX, let's change our benchmark to the VVC. That's my preference. So the VVC was up 5%. Nine winners, one loser. Best performer, still ESDE up 27%. But on the pullback in the market, we see that we saw our nine winners turn into six winners. Zim pulled back 25%. LVLU pulled back 10%. So pretty big swings, and that's part of the volatility that makes living through bear markets such a dream. So yes, yeah, a little sarcasm there. My apologies. But the key here is, there is great potential if I can manage that pullback. But here's the roll-up of those quick test results. And so the bottom line, in a volatile market period, demonstrated potential with those gains to the peak, but also demonstrated volatility and a demonstrated need to capture those gains. So to refine these quick tests further, my next step is I want to go to the back tester. But I'll have to do it in manual mode since I'm using custom timing dates. So let me show you how to do that. And remember, we're changing the searches midstream. So let's move into the back tester and let us set it up. So let's back test an idea. And let's call this Easy Rider. On the account settings, let's take off commissions. We're going to execute our buying and sells orders at the next day's open. We're going to build a custom trading system and we're not going to use market timing signals. So our automation rules are we're going to go long and our first search was hottest growth stock. So let's go find it. For my stop criteria, I'm just going to start with a generic 30% gain, 10% loss. The idea being in these volatile markets, quick to capture the gains with the fixed stops. I give the stock a little bit of room to bounce around in its volatility, but not get so far off the rails that I suffer some of those big losses we saw in our quick tests. Under more settings, we're doing 10 stock portfolios, automatic replacing, and we'll just leave all of the default settings. Let's click finish. Let me get more specific in the name of this portfolio because I'm going to run multiple tranches. So 3010 was our stop, 10 stocks. Now let's set our date range. Remember we were starting this back on May 25th. So we'll run from May 25th to current. If I click finish and run, that would run the back test automatically all the way from May 25th to current. So I don't want to run it. I want to execute it manually. So we're finished with the setup. It's reminding me that I'm in a manual mode, which is fine. And now I've created the back test. We're sitting at May 25th, currently with our date line all the way here to 413, it's set up to run to current. So if I hit the run button, it would do the same thing as that automated test. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to go to the end date of my first cycle. And that was June 10th. So if I just click into the grid here, I got the 8th, 
I'll use my arrows to adjust to the tenth and I'll click run to advance the back test over here in the automation window this is where all the trades will appear I can also confirm the settings that I'm going to run hottest growth stocks with a 30 gain 10 loss on a 10 stock position so let's click run and we'll see the trades executing and the equity curve building into our stop date. So we see that on the equity curve, we got as high as 10.72%. We're currently sitting at 1.64%. If I click on the holdings button, these are the stocks that are currently in the portfolio as of this date. Notice all of the original stocks, but we did have one, EGY, was a new acquisition. And that happened because Zim stopped out. Remember Zim in our quick test lost 25%. So we closed that stock and replaced it and now everybody's current up to that to this date. The back tester has also prepared two orders for the next day to sell LVLU which hit its stop and to replace it with PHX. But we don't want that to happen. We want to move to cash. So to do that we're going to click on holdings. We're going to click close positions, close all, we'll get a confirmation window and this is where you could do any price overrides if you wanted to do that. We're just going to take all the autofills. Notice I now have 11 pending orders. If I click there, 10 sells, one buy. Well, I don't want to buy anything so let's delete that order. And if I continue to move forward, I still have portfolio automation turned on that's going to look to replace all 10 positions then using hottest growth stock. So I need to turn that off. So we'll go to Customize Trading System, click on the Automation Rules, and we'll change the search to None. And you want to confirm over here on the Automation Rules that it says None. So the stop loss is still in place. All the portfolio settings are still in place. We just took off the search. Click finish, finish and execute manually. Puts us back into the back tester in manual mode, sitting at our end date. If you want, you can go to settings and confirm over here that we have eliminated the search. So we'll ride cash from this point forward to our next signal date, which was July 7th. So I'll click here and let's find July 7th. And let's click run and we'll just close out those 10 positions and run us forward. And you should see a flat line. But did you notice how much the equity curve dropped? That's the slippage between the closing value of those positions and their sale price at the next day's open. So the portfolio is down 3.5%, which is not ideal. But let's keep going because trading system evaluation isn't done on just on one market turn. So we've advanced to July 7th and my notes tell me that our next search was jailbreak no contra ETFs. So I'm going to come to the trade from search button. I'm going to find jailbreak no contra ETFs. Select it. All of the Portfolio settings have remained the same. Click OK. Do you want to update your situation settings with these settings? Yes, because on a replacement basis, I want to replace anything that stops out with jailbreak no country ETFs. And I want to run the test up to August 29th, which was my next down signal. And click run. So quite a bit of volatility in the equity curve on this particular turn. If we take a look at the holdings again, notice that every stock in the portfolio was purchased after the start date. So all the original stocks stopped out and we replaced them with new candidates from the search. I also noticed as we got to our closing date right the market was pulling back and so was our portfolio so let's move back to cash 
To do that, we'll close all positions. I'm running through this a couple times just to give you kind of the muscle memory here. Wait for that to update. Pending orders. Click there. Delete all the new purchases. And turn off automation. Confirm it says none. Back into our test. And let's advance to our next signal date, which was October 26th. So let's review the performance. Over the test period, we had 30, let's call it 35% winners. Portfolio was up 21.89%, which annualizes at 24%. So not bad performance overall, with a maximum drawdown of 19.6%. Looking at the equity curve, lots of volatility in the equity curve, and we did see it stutter around a little bit, really saved by this last turn, which is great, but I don't want to sit around in a portfolio for seven months flatlining hoping and praying for a rescue at the end because, of course, we're looking for consistent performance. So at this point in the process, I have some quick tests that showed some promising results and a back test which showed positive results, although I'm still a victim of volatility in this market condition. So one of the things I can do to minimize volatility is to, instead of buying 10 stocks all at once on the first day, I can step in two stocks at a time into the move to spread my risk over time as I build the portfolio. And of course, any replacements would also happen two at a time. So to run that variation on the theme, let's strike a copy. And I'm going to change our name to Easy Rider 3010, 10 stocks, two at a time. And we'll change our trading rules. Remember, we're going back to the beginning here. So now this is hottest growth stocks, 3010. But in more settings, we're going to open a maximum of two positions in a single day. Finish. Finish and run manually. So we picked up the dates from the prior because we copied the prior test. All of that carries forward. I simply have to go back in and re-execute the test. And that process is the same. So in the interest of saving time, let me just show you the results of that test. Let's begin by just comparing the top line. So we, in our first test, had 30, we'll call it 35% winners. That improved to 39% winners by stepping into it at a time. Our gain jumped from 21% to 71%, annualizing to 80.5%. And our, draw, our drawdown dropped from 19% to 12%. Look at the volatility in the equity curve. We're going to compare that to the first test. So not only did we have progressively better performance by stepping into it at a time, we also dramatically reduced the size of those reversals, the volatility in that equity curve. We also were able to minimize the drawdown, and so we were able to better develop our stair step of higher highs. I'm getting a little long in the tooth here on this presentation. I did want to run one more test that only traded five stocks instead of 10. If we focus just on the top five performers, could I see a substantial difference in the performance? So here's the results from that test. So as we compare the three winners, we actually had percentage winners fall back to 34, consistent with where we were with the 10 stock group. The gain, however, at 73%, far exceeds the gain we had on the 10 stock basket, although at parity with the two at a time basket. 
The big difference is our max drawdown jumped back up to 18.5%, midway between, but closer to our 10 stock portfolio, midway between the two at a time and the all in portfolios. But let me show you the big, the big difference, which might be the decision maker for you. I'm going to go into the reports button and look at the summary report for not only our five stock portfolio, but let's also look then at our two at a time portfolio. Let's see if I can get both of these on the screen at the same time. So the five stock portfolio here to the left, the 10 stock two at a time portfolio here to the right. Even though our gains are very close, the five stock portfolio had substantially fewer trades, much less actively traded than was our 10 stock portfolio, which had 122 trades. The other consideration is because we're still starting with the same portfolio size, spreading it out over fewer stocks, the trade size is doubled relative to the 10 stock portfolio. So more risk in each trade to deliver the same net gain, but of course on a percentage basis, they equate. So I'll leave it up to you to decide which is a better fit for your investor temperament. But I wanted to demonstrate how you can explore some of your trading ideas. And while a manual backtest is a little clunky, it's suggesting in a real life routine, you'd simply check for the market timing signal, trade an easy rider winner until you get a down signal, rinse and repeat on the next up signal. So this was certainly not an exhaustive study or a fully optimized long-term test. You just simply didn't have time, but it is pointing the way toward a systematic approach to the markets based on the VectorVest tools and analysis that's easy to execute. We encourage you to make it your own and let us know what you find as your easy rider. I want to thank you for watching.